So welcome to the Pligo dashboard, cloud-based, familiar type of look and feel. And as we get further in, you'll see it's really not so complicated to use. The dashboard we'll have a quick look at here. We can see the activity feed, which is really interesting and it's useful. It's a kind of even mini search type of facility because I can come in and say, okay, Steve Wiseman, which is me, what are all the things, for example, I've imported recently or checked in, checked out? So you can come and see what the team have been doing even yourself recently. On the right-hand side, we have different details we'll get into later, shared documents, assignments, what you've checked out, what's checked out in the whole system. Some very interesting and useful information. If we click on statistics, here we have some really useful summary information, especially about your reused content, reused topics, text, and images. Maybe you assume I could use 20% of my topics once I've finished my organizing inside Poligo. And you can see actually here we're at 19.8, not bad. Also for hygiene, on the left-hand side, we have all the different types of orphan topics or orphan images. So I've got 255 topics, orphan topics, and that means that they're not being used anywhere. So I could essentially go in here into these topics, these documents, click one or click them all. And at the end, click this button and move them to trash or deleted. That's a, a way to keep your Poligo clean of unnecessary content that maybe it's past its date or it's not relevant to a product that you're producing at the moment in the company. Let's go back to the dashboard. On the left-hand side in the content manager over here, this is where the real work starts. This is where you start to get your fingers a little bit dirty. So we have different folders, documents where our content goes, media is where our images are placed. These are your normal types of PNGs, SVGs, JPEGs, Adobe Illustrator source files, all different types of image files, and we can organize them by folder. We won't be going in too much detail about this, but it's quite simple to upload images and to create new folders for them. The templates folder, which is where you can have ready-made content or structured structures of content that you can use elsewhere. For example, your release notes are always based on the same type of structure. Troubleshooting the same type of structure. Have them ready so you just base a new topic on a template and you're ready to go. Variable sets, which we'll talk about much more when we get into the reuse training. And at the bottom, we have taxonomies, which are essentially categorizations of content, organizing your content. A little bit like Gmail, you can tag your content, you can tag your content in Poligo. When you have thousands of topics in your system, they become very useful as well as using them externally. We have a video that talks about taxonomies as well. Let's open documents. And I have a whole bunch of folders. It's very simple as before to open folders. Let's actually create a couple of folders for our use here. In the recordings folder I've created previously, I click on the three dots. And these three dots always give me the activities or functions that I can do at this place. So I'm going to click on Create Folder. And I'll create one called Pubs. And I'll create another one called Topics. By the way, this is the default structure that Poligo creates when you're importing content. You don't have to have it this way. It really doesn't matter, but I'm just setting up in the same way. Behind the scenes is a database. You don't necessarily see it, but you feel it, and it really will help your work, especially so you know what's going on where, what's the implications of changes I make. Let me show you. So I'm gonna click on the tutorial folder, and I'm gonna click on the tutorial topics folder. On the right, you can see now what we call the resource view. If you want to call it the file view, you can do or the folder view, you can do that as well. And I can see everything that's in this folder. If I click on the arrow here alongside the folder, the same list appears here, maybe in a slightly different order. If I click on the icon alongside one of these components, and by the way, if I use the word component or document or even topic, I mean the same thing as we go through these sessions. The most common component, as we'll see, is a topic. Click on that arrow, and it opens a lot of metadata for this particular topic. We can see, if you're doing translations, the status of the translations. 
I want to get to related resources. I actually get to see the repercussions. How is this topic related to anything else in the system? So if I make a change, I'll know the repercussions of this change. What's it going to affect? Maybe I don't, I want it to change here, but I don't want it to get changed there. This is how I can know all this. I can see the publications it's being used in. I can see if it's being reused and where it's being reused. So I've got this Im immediate visual indication of what's going on. And not just that, if there were links, I'd see them as well here. And if I click on an image that's being used in this topic, I can immediately see for this image, where is it being reused? And you can see in reused in. The description can also be the alt image when you're producing to HTML. We can see again, this is a busy image. On top of that, rather than using conditions like I've used in other systems in the past, I can say, maybe this image has a Chinese variant of it. So I just click on Chinese, as you saw, I can upload a new image, and so that'll be related with the source image. So when I publish to Chinese, it will automatically pick up this Chinese image. Very simple to do. You can also replace with existing images. So if you want to replace one image with another, or just to upload a new image, you can do that as well. If you also note, more for the future, alongside each of these components, we can see the taxonomies and their release status. We'll be talking about both of those in separate recordings, just to know this is the place where you can see that information. And you can also see the languages that are available for each of these components and various pieces of functionality that we can go through as we go along. A preview, for example, is really useful. So you can actually see information about the content. Something else that's important about the database, and I have my own kind of silly expressions, is Polygo can stop you or significantly reduce you being an idiot. So say, for example, I want to delete this topic. So I go to the three dots and I would click on delete. And I click on delete items. Polygo shouts at me. It tells me I'm using this 18 times. I won't delete it for you because that would be pretty bad for any other publications or topics using this topic. If you notice as well, there's lots of options here, which we'll go through as we move along the training to learn more about Polygo. But some obvious ones are renaming content. You just click on rename and you can rename the content and click the tick or the X as you like. You can also move to trash or delete. The difference between the two is trash is a folder down below, which I'll show you in a second. It's still part of the system, it's still there. Delete takes it out of the system completely. As a note, even after something's been deleted, you do have a chance to restore it. In the activity feed I showed you before, for a certain amount of time, there is an option to restore deleted files, but please don't use that as a process. That should just be a last ditch. I've made a mistake to delete. I want to bring it back again. It shouldn't be part of a process. If you copy something, it'll actually make a copy of that topic or component and give you a new name and follow you follow it according to different parameters you've put in, so you'll get updated when this document is changed. Something else to show is when we edit, we have different edit options. We'll be going to the editor soon. Open structure actually shows me the same information as I had in the resource view, but it contains it in a more condensed way because we can still see where everything is being used. And at the bottom, we also have a preview. So you can actually see the topic. And if it's on a publication, you could browse through it as well.